It's been almost two decades since we started our journey to educate and help you take action so you may better manage your financial future. Our goal is to help you accomplish your life's purpose. This podcast reveals financial tips, strategies, and insights that will help you to set your financial goals and guide you along the way. This is Managing Your Financial Future, brought to you by the advisors at Lucia Capital Group. Uh, thank you so much. Welcome back. This is a, the a podcast. Of course, you knew that because you tuned in. I'm Johnny Dean, your podcast host, Managing Your Financial Future here with my favorite uh, certified financial planner, professional, CFP type guy of all time, Professor Rick Plum. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. This marks uh, episode number 130 for those of you who are keeping track. And by the way, it's our season finale, whatever that means. <laughs> it means we get a break. We get a couple week break. That's what we do. We do. We do like twelve episodes, and then, as we said, I think we mentioned this last week, uh, we'll be off for a couple of weeks. A lot of people don't listen, you know, immediately. Some do, but I think more people just, you know, get these as they come. So anyway, uh, we will be off for a couple of weeks, but we will have uh, uh, more guests coming up next season, if I can call it that. That's what we're calling it. Uh, for the next 12 episodes, already some good topics planned, and some suggestions from you folks, by the way. Which, uh, it, it, in fact, today's topic came from that. You remember Professor Plum a couple of weeks back, maybe a month. I guess it was right after the start of the year. We talked about this whole Secure 2.0, the right. Secure was, Act. Secure 2.0 is a subset of that. I, I don't remember the name of the bill that was passed uh, December um, 29th uh, of last year. Yeah, I, I'm cheating and I'm, I'm looking. It's the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023. How right. boring is that? <laughs> The, and Secure 2.0 basically was started right after Secure the Secure Act was passed way back in 2017, I 19, think. 19, it was, oh, was it 19? Okay. Uh, for, yeah, you're and, right. It was. Yeah. Uh, and they started working on additional enhancements, and it was this block of changes, and they just basically took the block and put it into that yeah. new bill that you know they passed it, it December 29th. It was a work in progress and so and I imagine even this one might be a work in progress. Who knows. And there are some things that still need to be clarified in the way that it was written. So the we'll sunset uh, of the the, the tax uh, thing from 2017 isn't part of that, but that no. may be something that they're going to be looking at. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Today's topic has to do with uh that and specifically uh <laughs> the 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 529 plan yes, portion. They did uh they made uh, a change to it starting next year, starting January 1st, 2024, yes. for legacy, leftover uh, money that you, that's you that been in a 529 plan. Uh, it was, it's been an issue, and it's been one of the reasons why when people were talking about saving for college education, uh, children's education, uh, I would say, you know, 529s are fine. Just don't overdo it because you don't want to leave any money in it. Right. Because now- if you leave money in it, how do you get it out? Because if you take it out for anything other than – the qualified education expenses, the earnings are going to be taxable and penalized regardless of the age. Yeah, so let's let's talk for a second. I know a lot of people know because especially the people who had asked us, and it was it was far more than one person uh, over the last month we've gotten these emails, um, uh, what a 529 plan is for those who, who are not or forgot or whatever, <laughs> don't know. Uh, it's a state-sponsored tax-deferred savings plan for educational expenses, for, and you can use it to pay tuition fees and all that kind of stuff. For uh, your children or a beneficiary's education, and you can uh, you know put in quite a bit of money. There's there are limits, but most people don't hit those limits. <laughs> well, each state does each state have a different limit? Uh, it has to, it has more to do with gifting limits, but um, okay, all right, uh, yeah. It, but you can put in a big chunk of money. Uh, we have you basically can use five years worth of the annual gift exclusion in one lump sum, which right now is it uh, seventeen thousand dollars? Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. So, that's so what's that? Eighty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. Boom! You can do that in one lump sum. Now you can't do it again, technically. You know, for another. That's just one person adding to it. Yeah. Um, but so you can add quite a bit. And, I, and so what I I wasn't a big fan of overfunding because if we had leftover money, then what do you do with it? Uh, you, you go back to school yourself. Yeah. You change the beneficiary to yourself and go to night school. Find a neighbor uh, who's you, got a kid. That, you, you well, know. they can't go to a neighbor unless they're related. There is a. A certain relationship test. I mean, it's not exactly direct lineage, mm. but it can go out to uh, other right, family members. But it's got to be somewhere in the tree uh, of the family tree to be able to transfer the beneficiary. But Hopefully, the neighbor isn't in that tree. <laughs> 
Well, maybe they are. Well, maybe you know yeah, you could live next door to your your you know your. My your... friends did it way back when. I mean, they, that's uh, true. A friend of mine bought a house. This is back in the '80s, and uh, his brother came and goes, "Hey, remember how we used to play you know, uh, a telephone with the cans and the string?" And he's like, <laughs> uh, "Yeah." And his brother goes, "We can do it again. I bought the house next door." <laughs> oh man, you did. Oh, uh, it was fun when we were eight. I don't think I want to hang with you now. But for five twenty nine, the idea is to put this money away and, and use it, invest for it, and and it it's it's supposed and, to grow. Yeah, the, the whole idea is to get it to grow. Now, there's no federal tax deduction for putting the money in, but the earnings are allowed to grow tax deferred. And if you take the you know, take it out for qualified higher education expenses, the money is tax free. Uh, so that was a big incentive to help people save for their children's education. Yeah, so it could be uh, for years, I guess. It could be college or postgraduate or yeah. it's, it's what, college and above, I guess. Yeah, I think they've actually let it come down early. Well, they, that, but, they but did. But you really want to yeah. let it grow because, I mean, if you put it, if the kid's in you know, a junior in high school already and you put money away and you're going to use it in two or three years, you're not going to get that much growth. Well, you you're may not lose. Get, you're not, well, depending on how you invest it. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to get that much benefit from it. So it really works better the younger the child is so you can have more time for that money to grow and let it grow. And then there were other issues with it. But the 529, I didn't like it over I just didn't like to overfund it. Now, with the new laws that went into effect that now this particular law becomes effective, as I mentioned earlier, one one twenty four, leftover five twenty nine money can now be used to potentially help the beneficiary fund their Roth IRA. So you can actually use up to thirty five thousand dollars uh, for that beneficiary of the leftover 529 money. So you, you, they went to school, they didn't go to school, whatever the case may be, but they're done mm-hmm. with school and you find out there's X number of dollars left. You got money left in the 529. Well, now what do you do? Well, you can use it. The beneficiary can use it to fund their, as their contribution yeah. money to fund a Roth IRA. There are some rules, obviously. You know, you're not going to let just some anybody do this. It has to be leftover legacy 529 money. So the the rules are that the, the 529 has to be at least 15 years old. So you must have funded it. You can't do this in contemplation of do, you know funding it today and then taking the money out in two or three years to do this. It's money you you funded it what in 2008 or earlier, or is earlier, that, right? Well, we're 23, so that's 15 years. Yeah, right? that's what. Yeah, I had to do the math quick. Uh, So if you've had a 529 and and, and you don't need it. Because, as you said, prior to this, if you, or if if they didn't use the funds at all, whatever money you had in a 529, if it wasn't going to be used anymore by the person you intended or person. It was hard to get out the earnings without, you you had to pay taxes and penalties. Yeah, and and presumably if it been if it had been in there for a long time, fifteen years or something like that, there would have been some growth, and the result would have been uh, taxes on that growth, and then I was it ten percent ten percent penalty penalty, which you know makes it even worse. So so, so but, this is a this this is a a good step forward. So now you can use the money. So first off, the the beneficiary that you're funding the Roth that's funding the Roth IRA, um, this is their up to their Roth numbers. They obviously have to have a job because. You have to still the beneficiary has to be eligible to have a Roth contribution, and if they've already done a Roth contribution, don't do that because then they can't do this. This is the Roth contribution, so they can do sixty five hundred this year. Uh, so the lifetime limit is thirty five thousand. The annual limit right now is sixty five hundred. So this is not like a conversion. This is this is a, a contribution. contribution, and I think this might be where some people might. But uh, it is tax free. Well, it is. No, that's that's, that's true. A, a, conver- <laughs> a, a conversion you would have to pay. Yeah. But this is not, you know, some kind of, you know, if, if I've got thirty thousand in, in you can't a do it in twenty nine. The, the lifetime limit is thirty five thousand, but you can't do it in one year. It's going to take you several years to get this money over to the Roth IRA. Sixty five hundred currently. Yeah, per and year. Maybe it'll be more next year. We'll see. Maybe. But it'll take you a couple of years to move move the money over and to fund use it to fund the Roth IRA. Uh, so that's it's it's one of the good things. I think it makes. A lot of sense. Uh, it, I think it's a very cool thing to do. And so yeah. Now the and also any money that's been contributed in the last five years is not eligible to be used either. So it's, again, you maybe you've got two or three thousand dollars left over in your five twenty nine. You're thinking, wow, maybe I could. <laughs> I'll put in thirty five thousand. Oh, oh, oh and, and I see what you mean. We'll, yeah. so no, that doesn't work either. It's got to be. So it's the money be at least that's five years old. You, you you either can't have made a contribution or any the amount of contribution you made within the last five isn't years eligible. is not eligible yeah. ever. 
I don't know how they're going to. This is some of that interpretation that's yeah. going to be another interpretation that hasn't come out yet, but we we're hoping comes out in our favor. Is okay. So you know, maybe you're still 50, 55, your kid's done with school and you want to use that money for you. So I'm the parent. You're but the I, parent. Yeah, you're the, you're, yeah. You basically set it up. You're the custodian of the account. Yeah. yeah. You set it up for your child as the beneficiary and you say, well, they don't need it anymore. I could use it. Can I change the beneficiary to myself? Yes, you can. Now can that I, you've always been able yeah, to do. That's, a, that's not an issue, but will they look at that as, Still being 15 years old and still being able, they haven't clarified this yet, but it might be able to be used to fund your Roth IRA because now you're the beneficiary. And hmm. the nice thing about this, let's say you're making 250,000 household income and you, you are, you are you're over, over the limit. You yeah. can't, you haven't been able to make a contribution, oh, you know, yeah. but there are no higher income limits for this. So you would still be able to do it. <laughs> But I, we want to get clarification hmm. on whether or not that change of beneficiary is going to well, be. We got a year. year. We can't do any of this stuff yeah. for till till next year. Right. But it, it it's fun things to think about. Planning opportunities that may or may not be there. Wow. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to do this. But yes, it makes it it opens up a little bit more availability. It makes the five twenty nine a little bit more palatable. Yeah, yeah. I, I was looking online and they were saying the same thing. I was looking on the the savingforcollege.com. Oh, wow. I haven't now, been there for a while. I have not been there for years. Yeah. Well, I mean my I, you know, my your kids are out of school. My kids are long long out of school. But uh, I looked at that and and they had said the same thing and they recognized I apparently had recognized this um, uh, issue, the overfunding issue yes. and this issue that you you uh, uh, can't uh, use it for anything else. It it, it right. gets to a point where you almost say, well, the, the only way, the only thing I can do to get this money out is to pay the taxes and penalties, On hold, your, earnings, hold yes. your nose and yeah. do it or right. go back to school yourself. Now, also um, remember when you do a 529, let's say you put in $10,000 and it grows to 15. I'm just making numbers up when, and then your child has education expenses. When the money comes out, it's not a, what they call LIFO or FIFO treatment of it. It's not the first money in first money out, last money in first money out. Those oh, are, yeah. It is a pro rata distribution. So each distribution that comes out is Contribution part earnings. Contribution and earnings. Oh, part okay. earnings. Part, so at all times, there, if you have any earnings, there will every distribution will have earnings in it and parts of principal. So you can't just, well, I'm going to take out the earnings and no, then I'll be able that. to take out yeah. the I'll, I'll spend $5,000 on education out of my <laughs> example and then take the other 10 back. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Oh, well, but if you were ever going to be penalized on it, you'd only been penalized on the earnings portion. Right, you're only penalized on the taxable uh, uh, event. So the, the 529 account has to have been, as you said, maintained for a minimum of 15 years. It has to have the same owner. Uh, and now what this says is the same designated beneficiary. So the same designated beneficiary is the one that you're... That's the one I, I didn't see that in the actual document. I Yeah, so I only saw that on saving for college. Right, so, so maybe I, they're I don't interpreting... Know. So there are people interpreting it both ways, and I don't know which way is going to be right. I know it's available for the same beneficiary. The question is, can we manipulate it? Can we take advantage of it? Yes, and the amount transferred is limited to 35000 kind of aggregate yeah. over the... Oh, uh, over, over lifetime. Lifetime. Um, let's see what else. Uh, it is the funding. It is you are subject to the uh, funding limits of the co Roth co contribution. The person does still have to have earned income. Now but, this says here, as I just as I'm reading, the Roth IRA must be that of the 529 accounts original designated beneficiary only. Now well, the, again, I don't know that that's that was official. It, that I did not read that in the original bill. Yeah, so we so but I can see them could, adding that. I can or see it that's the interpretation yeah. that I'm expecting to get. Yeah. But I don't know which way it's going to go. Maybe they Because heck, I, I was just thinking my my older daughter still has some money in hers and <laughs> uh oh, out of heck with it. She might be listening. Um, <laughs> let her fund, let her fund her Roth IRA next year. I know. Yeah, she could. She could. Uh, let's see. The 529 account owner always had the option of changing the beneficiary, but they say that is likely. Oh, this again comes from savingforcollege.com. Uh, that is uh, doing so is likely to restart the 15. Right. That's what I haven't. Right. From but the it says Congress likely yet. to. They have not determined it yet. Yeah. And so they're taking the conservative approach. I'm taking yeah. the hopeful approach. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know the way things have been going. Um, all the uh, uh, other Roth IRA rules are applicable at that point. Uh, earned income requirement, as you said, right. you have to have earned income. Right, but the income limitations do not apply. Yes. So if yes. your kid comes out of school 
and they're you know still relatively young and they're making boku bucks you know they're way up there making big time money yeah they can still use this to fund their Roth IRA uh let's see what else so is- I think this I think this is a good deal now this comes into a, a bigger issue is how do we, the reality was it's tough to save for a, a child's education especially when they're young because that usually means you have a younger parent yeah and the younger parent they're trying to scrape two nickels together nickels together to get diapers let alone yeah. save for education yeah. 15, 18 years down the line. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, oftentimes we saw these 529s open by grandparents. Oh, yes. Uh, I don't know if more grandparents than parents did, but but I could see that happening because... Yeah. Well, it, it was nice when the grandparents did it because then uh, it wasn't an asset of the parents. Well, we used to talk about And it wasn't an that. asset of the child. So when you're filling out the, the FAFSA, FAFSA form, it's not an asset on the FAFSA. Yeah. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Not an <laughs> asset. On, not, a, not an asset on the fast. 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 Free application for federal student aid or something like that. Yeah, I forget. Gosh, it's been a long time since we talked about this. Well, because five twenty nines have not uh, been In really. Vogue? Not really. Now the other savings you have plan. To use, it's a state sponsored plan. You have to use the investments that through the the, the state uh, plan. Many of them use different mutual fund companies, yeah. and so if you like those mutual funds, you go to a. And you can, if you're a resident of California, you can use any of the other 49 states. Uh, yeah. There are a few states that offer a tax deduction against the state income tax. So if you're a resident yeah. of that state, you might want to stay with your own state's plan to give you that little bit of a tax deduction. Uh, California does not give you a tax deduction for it. No, um, but some do, as you said. But so yeah. it, so you and, and there's so you look at the fees, you look at the costs, and. You look at the investments, and then you decide whether or not you want to use a 529. And if you have any leftover money at the, after the kid's done with school or 15 years after you opened it, if the if the kid is working, uh, you can use it to fund their Roth IRA up to, th- up to a cumulative $35,000. Yeah, keep that 15-year rule in mind, too, because there are people who may have opened it up 10 years ago, you know, maybe when a kid was, was six or seven, and then they're getting ready to go to college. But the kid, you know, it's not... That, uh, you know, maybe they got a scholarship, you know, and, and yeah. they're, well, they're the, the ride. The, if they got a scholarship, there is the ability to take the money out of the 529 without the penalty. Oh, is that, is that always been that way? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't to remember To the extent that. of the scholarship. Now, if they've got a $1,000 grant or $1,000 oh, scholarship, oh, oh. You, can't you can't take, take 10000 out of oh, your oh, 529 oh. plan. You can but, take 1000 out. But that's only penalty, no penalty. You still pay penalty taxes yes. on it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Gosh, I I that's I did not. I don't think I ever remember <laughs> hearing that. Right. So if you have a five twenty nine that's not at the fifteen year mark, uh, and it doesn't look like you're going to need all the money in it, obviously still use it for education. I mean, I think this yeah. still makes sense. Uh, but if you don't need it for the education, we now have the opportunity to use it to fund the beneficiaries Roth IRA. I think it's a great idea. It is a great idea. I, I mean, it I, becomes I'm actually agreeing with something Congress did. Well, I mean, you wow. know, Roth, Roths were always a, the, 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 the idea of the Roth was, was, was a really good idea. I mean, it was probably the last really good idea, <laughs> which was 1998 is when this all came into existence. So it's been a long time, 25 right. years, yeah, 97, 98. We got two really good bills passed that helped us. We got the yeah. two hundred and fifty per owner uh, exclusion of home. We got purchase the homeowners ex- exclusion, yeah, uh, and, or five hundred for married couple, and uh, and we got the next year we got the Roth IRAs. Well, thank you, w- Senator Roth. Well, yeah, and uh, it, it was the actually the idea for the the homeowners exclusion came from the nineteen ninety six uh, right. presidential campaign. If you recall, right, they went I up think each other. I think Bob Dole yes. was it Bob Dole? Yeah. Bob uh-huh. Dole uh, proposed two hundred fifty thousand dollars of uh, tax free. Uh, per home sale. Per home sale. It, 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 subject to all the rules, and I'm not going to get into it. But but <laughs> and, and then Bill Clinton, Clinton said, said, "Well, I like that. That's, Let's get two fifty per person. How about this? I'm going to make it two fifty. How's that? You know, yeah. Bill. Being one the, was two fifty on the sale. The other was two fifty per, per owner. Per per yeah, per <laughs> owner. Yeah, so you which, got five hundred. If you're married or dead co-owner of somehow, <laughs> you could you could uh, save up to five. Uh, five hundred thousand dollars. That has not changed. The tax on five hundred. Yeah, the tax. Yeah, which has not changed, by the way. Since no, then. It's and still I know people that have taken wonderful. Event. Now they have changed some of the underlying rules. Where yeah. when it first came out, if you had five rental properties, you could yeah, live they, you in could one really for two it. years. You could re- sell it, move in another one, yeah. sell it, move in another one. The, uh, the only thing you had to do was recapture the depreciation since the date of the bill since ninety seven. So a lot of people were like. I can sell all five of my rentals over a period of a little over ten years, yeah. and get and get a five hundred thousand exclusion on both of them if you can get you your know, spouse that, to move too. That that but might be a that doesn't work that way anymore. 
That no, it doesn't. And now that's not on topic, but it's uh, it's it might be. I, I don't know when the last time we talked about this, but this may be a good thing for the first episode of next season to talk <laughs> well, about. Well, we've seen a lot of people selling and pocketing quite a bit of cash out well, the of homes reason, with well, the, the way reason, houses ran up. Now, they've come down a little bit, but they're still. Well, no, but I, well, I've seen that. You know, as housing prices started to come down, I've, I've known some people, and I don't have any stats to back this up, but some people who said, you know what, ah, it's time to get out because this, this thing could go down quite a bit. Well, my son and said this a year ago. And they jumped out. He sold, uh, not quite a year ago, but he he sold on the weekend, I think, that was the tippy top of the valuations in the area. And then the week after that, rates started going up a little bit. It started softening up. It, 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 and it was like, yeah, he, he hit it perfect. Well, but as you as you see these things start to change, I, I think more people are starting to say, I'm going to get out. It's 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 not coming back. So so the idea of selling something that you own for maybe a long time, that that's a good topic. It's not on this topic no, no. of the 529, but, but I like hey, that. But hey, if idea. you were to sell your house and, and then maybe find a place to move less expensive, that's another way to help fund education. So I brought it back to topic. Okay, well, that <laughs> could be a way to go. Or 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 Uh-oh. you take the 529 plan, you give it to your kid. They you know they put it in their Roth, and after a couple of years, they built up a nice, uh, you know, Roth contributions. They can use a portion of it for their first time uh, home. Oh, purchase. by the way, when that money comes over from the five twenty nine into the Roth, it has a basis, because remember I said it's going to be a pro rata distribution between earnings and growth. Yeah, sure. or earnings yeah. and principal. No, principle. there's contribution and, and earnings. Yeah. Those stay, and so if you pull money out that is part of that, that could be a taxable event if you don't do it right inside the Roth IRA. If you pull that out of the Roth. For any reason? Well, no. When you get to qualified distribution, it's tax-free. No, but I'm but saying— But that's part of the, that's part of the just earnings. Like, just like any Roth, though. Right. But that's, so if I put in $6,000— And it's worth And 12. four of it was principal and two of it oh. was, yeah. uh, was earnings, earnings that, that moved from the 529 into the Roth. Uh, yes, I put 6000 in. My contribution from a, the ability to take, you know, with a typical Roth contribution, if I put $6,000 into a Roth, I can take that six thousand dollars back out at any time for any reason for anything. Your I contribution, want. my yes, contribution. Yes, yes, yes. So this is a contribution, but there's an earnings portion sure. to it. So if I oh, did sure. turn around yeah, and yeah. said, "Well, I want to take that six thousand out," I'm going to pay tax on that uh, and penalty on that uh, two thousand of earnings that came from the from the uh, what do you right. call five twenty nine until you're s- such account. time as you're fifty nine and a half, and or you use it for, for the first time home purchase, or that's what I was saying <laughs> for the first time home purchase. That basis that portion counts. doesn't. Uh, oh, it counts. So if I pulled the six out. Two of it would go towards the ten thousand dollar limit, in that my hypothetical example. Oh yeah, for earnings you're saying for, for yeah, first time home purchase. For the first time home purchase. Yeah, but that's you know I mean. But yeah, it still makes it sense. still it does make sense. So we can relate. I like the five twenty nine contributions oh, to, to a, the home to the home thing. We've tied it all together. We are really in <laughs> sync. Yeah, this is something, man. I, I don't know. Maybe we should maybe we should have one more episode for this season. Whatever you think. Probably I'm here not. every day anyway, so what the heck? You know? yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, but we do have some other good episodes. But I am going to write that down. And and this may be a... I, I, now, the problem is you're going to write it down. And I'm going to lose and it. And we're going to see where you can find it. I know. When we do this. Because it's not next <laughs> week. Didn't I do this last time and, and, and we actually did talk about it? Didn't I say next week? I came up with an idea <laughs> during the show. And I said, next week, let's talk. And we, we actually did it. We actually did that. And it wasn't that long ago. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Yeah, I will write this down because it is a good topic, and I, I just don't think we've discussed it for a while. And I, I hope people are interested. And, you know, you folks listening, if you have uh, topics you want us to talk about, as I said, this 529 topic, it, it did not occur to me to talk about it. I guess it should have, other than when we mentioned it in our discussion, of broader the discussion of secure, the Secure 2.0. 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, uh, it, you know, we, we don't know what you folks listening are, are particularly interested in until you let us know. So we've gotten some emails from people, and uh, it just seemed to make sense to talk about that. So uh, anything else you want to add on that? We're not going to get into Coverdell uh, because it doesn't really – if nothing well, it, is – It hasn't changed. Nothing's changed on the Coverdell. Coverdell was the other, the other way to fund uh, uh, education. didn't have to just be college. Right, and it wasn't state-sponsored. You could use a brokerage account. You could buy stocks. You had a lot more investment control. Yeah. But the annual limit was $2,000 per beneficiary. And still is, yeah, as you, still. As you said. It's been at least and 25 years. You can't contribute after the ter- person's 18, and all of it has to be distributed by the time the person turns 35, I think. So it was much more restrictive in the contribution distribution phase, uh, but it had much more uh, availability of investments. Was It was tax-free, right? It would be if it were qualified education expenses. But if there's 34 and you're saying, i got to take this money out because it's you know, going to be 35, 
you're going to be taxed and penalized on it anyway, are you not? If you have let in. This little raw thing doesn't apply to the cover. No, it doesn't apply to the cover. But most Boy, people really I, I, kicking that thing. I've around. seen a lot of five twenty nines over the years. Yeah. I do not see very many fi- coverdales very much. And we haven't even really seen all that many five twenty nines. I mean, we have, we but for the reasons well, we should see more now. But for the reasons that that they, that they fixed this or or made these changes, I think were, were many of the reasons why. And plus, a lot of people don't even know about a five twenty nine. They didn't even know what it was. Qualified? Ask people. Ask people with college with who have done college research if they know what a five twenty nine plan is. Qualified Some do, many program. do not. A QTP, a qualified tuition program. Not to be confused with a uh, QCP a Q, or or QTIP, a qualified terminal terminable interest. Uh, what is that? The, the QTIP property. trust. I think it's property. Yeah, where you can you can uh, stick it uh, to the to no. the next spouse, right? No, you don't. Know, no, you you let them have all the income, but they just can't change the beneficiary. That's what it was. I just remember we talked about Q-tip trusts years ago. Talk about there's, another. They're still they're still out there. Oh, I know. They're still that. useful. Uh, yeah, they are. But that's the we use that. We use that. You can tell the you can tell the the, well, yeah, the stick, stick it, it in their ear. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, boy, were we clever back then. I think we're better now, quite <laughs> frankly. Uh, if you have any questions about we'll five twenty nine plan. <laughs> You're darn right I'm going to take care of that in post. 529 plan. Uh, you can uh, talk to us here at Lucia Capital Group. <laughs> uh, give them a call, 800-644-1150. That's the number at Lucia Capital Group, 800-644-1150. I mean, planning for college is part of your, you know, it's part of your life plan anyway, at least now. I mean, you know, until they bring the cost of college down and who knows if or when that's going to happen. So this is an expense. It's, it's an expense that, you know, parents – for the most part, have to uh, deal with. So talk to him at Lucia Capital Group, uh, and they can give you more information on this Roth thing. And if you've had a 529 plan for a while, but you're still not sure about the rules or should it be, should you, you know, <laughs> put it in the Roth for your kid or whoever the beneficiary is next year? That's right. Very important. Not till next year. Um, they, they, you, they can run the numbers and do all that stuff. And I think between now and then, the uh, rules will be clarified. We'll see. In writing. They've got to be. No, they don't got to be. Until somebody challenges it, it's not going to get verified. Oh, man. Yeah, and then you're going to get in, in retroactive trouble for doing something that uh-huh. was clarified. We and, and that's not too far-fetched, by the way. We've seen instances where I think people were penalized. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I, we've talked because about of a it wrong before, because of a wrong interpretation. Yeah. Anyway, don't worry about that. Uh, talk to the folks at Lucia Capital Group. You can go online, find out some more about this stuff. Uh, L-U-C-I-A-C-A-P.com. That's Lucia Capital cap.com and as i said blog posts videos all kinds of stuff updated things on this 529 plan uh you want to subscribe to our podcast do so we would love to have you as a subscriber you get to listen to these shows and download them and uh, just just listen to all of them to your heart's content a friend of mine said he finally figured out how to subscribe and it just shows up in his yeah uh, inbox or whatever and he doesn't have to think about going out looking for it anymore it just shows up he likes it oh it's great i mean i've i've had I've spotify is mine but he but, does but the apple one. you can do apple and you, all you do is punch on oh here's the podcast i like and and it gives you generally it gives you all the episodes and the new one just happens to be right there yep it's kind of nice yep remember when you had to actually be home to watch tv and you had to be <laughs> in your car or at home next to a radio to listen to your favorite program or whatever you had to schedule your life. You really did. You couldn't you really binge. Did. Can you imagine even going back to one tenth of that? Oh, can you imagine actually having to get up, to change the channel? <laughs> <laughs> no, I cannot. To hold the rabbit ears a certain way so you can see the TV. <laughs> I don't even know how to change the channel on my TV without the remote. I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get too far gone, we're going to have to. Professor Plum, you've got some people to meet here. Uh, uh, Spotify or Apple, you can find us on there. Please do subscribe. Uh, That's it. Uh, Thanks for a wonderful season. Uh, We'll be off for a couple of weeks, but we will uh, have a new topic, a bunch of new topics and uh, new uh, folks to talk to in the next season. For Professor Rick Plum, uh, CFP professional, I'm your podcast host, Johnny Dean. Thanks so much for listening. We will talk to you again next time.
The information provided should not be considered specific tax, legal, or investment advice and is not specific to any individual's personal circumstances. These materials are provided for general information and educational purposes based upon publicly available information from sources believed to be reliable. We cannot assure the accuracy or completeness of these materials. No client or prospective client should assume that the information presented serves as the receipt of or a substitute for personalized advice from Lucia Capital Group or from any other investment professional. Earnings from a 529 college savings plan can grow tax deferred and may be withdrawn free of federal taxes when used for qualified education expenses. Non-qualified withdrawals are subject to a 10% penalty tax. Traditional IRA account owners have considerations to make before performing a Roth IRA conversion. These primarily include income tax consequences on the converted amount in the year of conversion, withdrawal limitations from a Roth IRA, and income limitations for future contributions to a Roth IRA. In addition, if you are required to take a required minimum distribution, or RMD, in the year you convert, you must do so before converting to a Roth IRA. Roth IRA distributions of principal from a Roth IRA are tax-free. However, any earnings will be taxed at ordinary income rates, and a 10% penalty tax will apply if withdrawn prior to age 59 and a half or within five years of the date the Roth IRA was established, whichever is longer. Examples cited are hypothetical, are for illustrative purposes only, are not guaranteed, and subject to potential federal and state law amendments. There is no guarantee that you will achieve the results discussed or illustrated. Before investing, carefully consider a mutual fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, which contains this and other information, call your financial advisor. Read the prospectus carefully before investing. Rick Plum is a registered representative with and security and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and member FINRA SIPC. The investment professionals are affiliated with LPL Financial and are conducting business using the name Lucia Capital Group, a separate entity from LPL Financial.